Guys, welcome back to the Mary Boozers RC channel. Today we have the brand new Hangar 9 P47 plug and play. So you guys that have been watching the channel for a little bit know we just did the Ultra Stick plug and play. This is a great new thing they're doing over at Hangar 9 where the planes come with a motor pre-mounted, screwed together construction, um, but then this particular model has a option to go 6S now. So what we want to do today is we're going to show you how to put this airplane together for 4S or for 6S. So if you're going to put this model together for 4S only, screw it together. Don't worry about any glue. If you're going to do like we are, we're going to set ours up to where it can fly on 4 or 6S. So we're going to need to glue our wing halves. So we're going to need to glue our tail. So I'm just telling you, as we go through this process, if you're building for 4S, you will not need the glue, port, glue parts of this assembly. You'll just need to screw it together. But if you're following along to fly 6S like we are, you will need to go on ahead and order your optional part uh, propeller. It's a 12.8E. If you're going to fly 4S, you just stick with your factory installed wood prop. And like I said, you're going to follow along and do the gluing with us. So we've got everything out of the box. This looks like a really simple assembly, guys. Give us a second to get set up, and we are going to start off by gluing our wing halves together. All right, guys, so we've set up everything here to start our assembly process. The first step we're going to do is go on and get our wing glued together. Now, if you're running the 4S setup, like I said, all you need to do is push this together, make sure everything joins up, these wires come down in the wing. You just got to put them up through these four holes. But I'm telling you right now, go on and test fit everything. And like I said, if you're 4S powered, you can leave it like this. Now, I'm showing you that you can do 6S also. So once we know that this all fits, we know that we're not going to have any issues. You can bolt that on the airplane and go fly 4S. For 6S, what you want to do is get you some 30 minute epoxy. Don't use five minutes just because you don't have much time to work with if you're not experienced with this. Get you a paper towel and some isopropic alcohol, the 91% rubbing alcohol. What this is good for is once we put our wing together, if there's any spillages, the alcohol will take that off. Get you a little cup to make your epoxy in. And I, I know that the instruction manual shows a brush. A popsicle stick works just as good. You'll need a little clamp for the front of the... Uh, um, wing whenever we get done gluing and some painters tape your choice on what size you use so in order to get started here we're going to separate our wing halves again I'm going to remove my tube just a little bit here so where I can smear some of this on here it's epoxy guys so you're going to put one half and one half one part to one part so we're going to open this up we don't need too much of this Put a little of that in there. All right, now we want to put the same amount of hardener in there. Just like that. Now I have a little measurement on here, but you don't have to be absolutely perfect exact with this, guys. Half and half. Now we're going to mix it all up. And we got 30 minutes to go. From this point, we have 30 minutes to get this wing half exactly how we want it. Once our time is up, and it could be 20 minutes. I mean, it, you, you've got a 30 minute work window, but sometimes it starts setting up and it's time to go right then. So when using epoxy, just remember you have a certain amount of time. So I'm gonna go on and start off. And I'm gonna rub a little of this on this spar right in here, just like that. I'm going to push it in and turn and rotate as it goes in until it bottoms out. Just like that, I'm going to run it around in there. And that got my first step set up. Now next, we're going to be easy on this. As we put our epoxy on, we don't want to smear this everywhere. We want to just go in the halves. So I'm going to start here in the middle. You're going to leave a gap around the outside. We know it's going to squish a little bit. Sure. 
So we're going to go all the way around it. We're going to go all the way around here. Try to do this without doing it. And get it all over everything. Doing it on camera is not the easiest thing in the world, though. Probably good though. That's a lot. Papa's over there. Papa, you want to do both halves or just this one and then smash it together? Just one. All right. We're going to put a little bit on this. We're going to put a little on this spar for whenever we push it together. Papa's put about nine billion of these together in his life. So I lean on him a little bit on this part. Put a little bit of goop right there. Right. So don't be too with it. I put quite a bit on there. Yep. Here we'll put one more goop of it. Bunch of it. It's all the way up. All right. I'm gonna call it good, guys. So now we're gonna take and slide this in. I'm gonna rotate and spin as I go. I'm going to take and just kind of run that around in there. All right, here we go. Put the two halves together. Now, I do want something to set this on as I do this so it don't leak all over our carpet. It will leak out. Set this under it just so if I get goop all over it, I don't get our carpet gooped. All right, so I'm going to take this, clamp it on the front. Make sure you don't got no servo sticking out in here. Now we're going to clamp that tight. And then, yep. Then we're going to flip this around. And I'm going to pull it together. Put a piece of crate tape across here. He's yelling at me. He said, use the small one. So, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take me a piece of tape and go across here. Now, I'm going to pull the wing halves together and put this tape across. Now, there's a little bit squirting out. That's okay, guys. Let's see if the other side did any. Oh, I got gotcha. you. We're going to do the same thing again. We're going to put our piece of tape on. We're going to hold the wing halves together as good as we can. And we're going to slide that across there. I can see the stuff squirting out. Now we can take a little bit of alcohol. You do the tape on the front too. I got Papa yelling at me right now. Put the tape across the front even with the clamp. So, all right. Right. I'm going to get some of this alcohol. And I've got a crack right here that I'm going to just wipe it out of. Just like that. Just go ahead and clean that off. We're good. Flip it over. Yep, there's just a little bit right there in the middle. There you go, guys. So we had it squish out just a little bit, but you can see the alcohol took what was left over right off. Now we're going to set our wing off to the side somewhere. Yeah, where make sure the back is equal. It's not yep. down in the back. He's, sorry, I was going to set this off to the side, but right here he's talking, make sure everything's equal, and it is. Everything looks good. So I'm going to set this off the side. We're going to let it set there for 30 minutes and then we'll be ready for the wing again. Give us just a second to reset and we'll move on to the next part. All right, guys. So the next part we're going to do is put the tail on. I've gone on ahead and dry fit it. It's as simple as slide your tail in from the back. The top will key down from the top. You can move all your stuff out of the way and line all your little holes up. <laughs> you got to get everything just right. Don't force anything. When you do finally get it, look, it just drops right in. Now, 
if you're gonna run 4S, there's a little magnetic hatch that comes right off right here. And you can see the two screw heads come out right here. You're gonna put your two bolts on if you're gonna run 4S. Now, like I said, we're building ours for 6S, so what we need to do first before we screw all this on is we're gonna take the tail back off. We need to cut some of the covering off of this and prepare it to accept glue. Like I said, if you're running 4S, you can go on and just bolt that on. But for the time being, let us get over here and we're gonna show you how to cut the covering off. All right guys, so our next step that we're gonna do is glue our tail on. Um, what we have already gone on ahead and done is with the parts in the airplane test fitted, we took us a little marker and we just did a dot at the front and the back edge of all our control surfaces. And as you can see, I got a little black line here and a black line here. This is gonna let me know where I can cut to. I don't wanna cut right to the line. I wanna be somewhere on this side of it. See on my tail, yeah, I wanna cut this bottom half down here so I got somewhere to glue to. When I pull my other fin off here, my uh, horizontal, you can see that I've got my dots, my dots, and my dots. So I wanna be inside of that. Usually you wanna leave, I mean, what do you think, half an inch at least. You know, if I'm coming there beside that, I, you know, I wanna leave me about a half an inch. You know, you saw there's wood to touching wood. Right. Is, is the idea here, guys? So, I don't know if Papa can zoom in while I do this, but I'm gonna cut this piece right here. Get you a straight edge. Yeah, and I'm sitting on this. No easy way to do this right here, guys. I got one right here. Got one. So I'm gonna come in about half an inch from that mark and I'm gonna score down that without cutting the wood. You're just trying to cut the covering, so just lightly down it. Like that. Same thing on the other side. I'm gonna go in about half an inch. Score it. I'm gonna come across the front here. Be careful not to get into the balsa. You want to wood weaken the balsa. All you want to do is cut the covering. Right. Let's see if you I can peel it up. The balsa if you cut too deep. Do not do that. Just trying to peel it. Yeah, we were just lightly pushing on it like that. There you go. I'll hold it up here in just a second for them, Papa. Yes. So guys, you can see my lines here that are my outside of my fuselage, and you can see where I cut the balsa out right here. Not the balsa, excuse me, just the covering. You're just trying to score it lightly until you get the covering cut, and we ripped out this inside part. So this is gonna be inside of the airplane where you're not gonna see this, but this is gonna give me a good place to put my epoxy all in here and it's gonna stick wood to wood inside of there. The secret to cutting the covering is to have a sharp exact yep. path that you do not want to cut into the wood. So part. on the tail, I'm gonna do the same thing, but we wanna make sure that we don't uh, overcut. You just cut up a little bit. You know, I've got my line way up here, it's a mile away. So I'm gonna come down here. I'm gonna take this bottom like half inch of covering off. See, flip it over, do the other side. All right, let's see if we can't peel this off now. And the good part is this, this part is gonna be under all the glue and everything. So you're not gonna have to worry about it looking pretty under here. You're covering this all in glue.
All right, guys. Get that one cut right here. This edge off. So all we've done is opened this wood up right here to where when we glue these two halves together here in just a moment, the two halves are going to set in there and that wood's going to be squished up and get all that glue everywhere in there. So we've still got our 30 minute epoxy. It's pretty set up right now though. It's still goopy. It'll work. So the trick is we got to push all this stuff in here. and uh, do it before it dries. So, here we go. Now you're just using five minute epoxy. Right, our 30 minute epoxy is now five minute epoxy. So we just gotta work kinda quick. So I wanna get everything ready so I can fumble this at one time on the rudder too. So the trick here is we got to push it in. We got to put this all together all at once. Because once it sets, it's going to go quick. Did you get it on the front side? The front end? That's okay. It's going to have the bolts too. Just like that, guys. Line it up, push it in. That's it. Now we let this set for about five or 10 minutes. Um, I'm gonna take any alcohol and I'm gonna clean any of the goop around it. There's a little goop coming out of this control surface here. I don't want it to get into this. Uh... Yep. I do have some running out the back right now. And what we're gonna do is take this alcohol and clean it out of this uh, Control, no biggie. We're gonna work it and make sure it ain't getting it. Make sure that our controls are still free. It's hitting on, oh, hitting on the control rod. <laughs> yep, we're free. I'm gonna grab another towel real quick. This one's kind of peeling apart on me. Now guys, we got a little bit coming out the top over here, so I'm gonna get me an alcohol. I'm gonna just take and rub that across there and get that cleaned out as best I can. I mean, it's setting up. We were, we were right on the edge of done. It's about as close as we're getting that. Yep. enough guys looks good to me all right we're gonna let this dry and then we'll meet back with you in just a minute all right guys so we flipped our p47 over we've glued our tail section together with our 30 minute epoxy and now we need to put all our little hardware on back here in the back in the kit there are four big washers and two little washers the little washers are the ones we're concerned with the two little washers you're gonna put your two little washers on the tail. I've already put this one on just to make this process a little faster. 
because it does take me a minute to get these screwed down. And take your lock nuts. And I did accidentally get a little bit of glue on this nut, but once I can get it started, I can get it all the way down. We're just gonna extra lock nut this. So I'm using a little quarter inch boxed in wrench. And set here and spin. Now I will get Lori to go on and cut this part to where it's already down. All right, all tightened up, guys. So the next step we need to do is put our three screws in that are going to hold our tail on. We need to take a little bit of thin CA and we're going to put a drop in each hole. So a drop there, drop there, and a drop there. Thin CA should kick off real quick. All that does is help reinforce the little holes here. Uh, I wouldn't use activator or anything. Uh, just let that set for a few seconds and it'll be dry enough. There are, I believe it's eight of these little screws and then there's four longer screws. The four longer screws are gonna be for our cowling. So we wanna get three of these little aggressively threaded screws. We're gonna put our little tail uh, part on that holds the rudder and we're going to screw those in to the wood. I get a different screwdriver that fits that a little bit better. It's a number two Phillips. I'm going to find one eventually that fits it. Ah, oh, there she is. Make sure we're hitting the hole. They are pre-drilled. I think. There it goes. Make sure that's all the way seated. Grab our next screw. And a third one. Now, I'm gonna turn this up so Dad can zoom in on it. You guys can see that. But I have three screws now in here. We have both of our nuts and washers assembled on here. At this point, that tail is ready to be finished up. So, the last thing we're gonna do, remember we're doing our 6S setup. We glued our tail on, so we're never gonna have to take this off again. If this gets broken, we're gonna just be getting a new fuselage. The nice thing about if you're running the forest and you don't glue this together is that you can unscrew and bolt on a new piece. Now I'm going to come around here. This is magnetic, but I'm afraid with 6S that could fly off. So what I'm going to go on and do, there ain't no reason I'm ever going to need to get back in there again. So rather than worry about that, I'm going to take some of my thick uh, slow zap, put a little on here. A little on here, a little on here, a little on here. I'm gonna throw that in there. And that, we don't gotta worry about that coming off again now. And guys, we've got the tail finished now. It's time to move on to the front end of this airplane. All right guys, so our next step is to start fitting the cowling. The cowling has four bolts that come from the back. So what we've done is just put it on here. And there is a black little shroud that goes on the front of this. Now this is a completely optional step for you guys if, if you don't want to do this part, but I want my dummy radial engine in mind, so I'm going to do this. So the way we're going to do it right now is we've slid the cowling on. This piece is still loose in here, but what we're doing is we're going to make a mark all the way around the inside of this cowling to where we can see where it needs to be. Also, this part right here is rubbing on the motor up here, so we're going to dremel this piece out a little bit to make it fit better. This is part of the, they've always been like this. This is part of balsa airplanes when you start building them. But this cowling 
is not going to fit exactly perfect. That's why you get this little piece separate and you've got to do this yourself. So like I said, we're going to mark it all out on the inside. We're going to dremel the front of this out a little bit for that motor to clear because you can see it hits right now. When I spin that, it hits all in here. And we need to make that not hit. Like I said, if you can't figure this part out, it's no big deal. The airplane flies fine without it. It cools better without it. So just leave it out if you can't do this part. But that's what we're gonna do now. We're gonna start dremeling on this and it's just gonna take a little bit of fumbling back and forth and we'll show you when we get done with what we're doing, how we got it. Okay guys, so this cowling is uh, kind of sometimes a little bit tricky. It's not hard, it's just the first time it's, it's a little bit on the frustrating side to get these dummy cowlings in there. And there's many ways to mount them. It, so it says in the instruction book that you will use some silicone glue, which uh, is not bad. It's, you just got a lot of glue in there. You're gonna be gluing it. You don't have to glue it all the way around, but you're getting to trying to get the glue in there is kind of a pain in the rear end. So what I've done here is, what I've did is, we, we told you that we originally dry fit it into the cowl and we needed to remove the material around here to make sure that the motor would clear through the hole here. You got that? The, the other thing is, guys, if you remove this, you want air to go into that engine anyway. So removing that material is not gonna hurt you. This is not a scale airplane, so we're, we're, it's, we're making it as scale as we can to the airplane that we're building. But you can understand there, so we cleaned that out. So we did that with a Dremel tool. I, all I did was take this Dremel tool with this sanding head and went around and around very carefully and just it removes it. Any of this plastic like that, we also removed two things to let air to the ESC down here at the bottom. So you're gonna get air through the engine, air through the ESC. That's all you need. Now I do believe the instruction says to remove the, uh, the material around all of these, but I don't think it's necessary. You can do it if you want to, but we didn't do it. So what we did the next, instead of using the glue that they're recommending, what I did was when I dummy fit the cowl, I had this up in there like this. When I had it up in there, what I did was look and see where, all I did was hold it up in there and see where this was, was the best uh, when I had it up in there where, where it needed to be, okay? So when I took it back out, I had that, I held that around and drew, drew a, a ring around the inside of that black. And I'm gonna remove it and you can see it. So I drew it with a marker. You can see it in there, can you, can you see the ring? Yeah, I can see it, let me zoom in. Okay, so you can see the ring that I drawed around with a ma magic oh, marker. Yeah. There you go. Okay, now you can also see I took four pieces of balsa wood, just blocks, and I blocked that up for the front side of the cow. Well, hold that up real quick and we'll show them what you're talking about. See these little blocks right here? Let's that see. Tilt it down towards them. Yeah, there's see, one there's back there. There's a block. And there, and there's there's four right of them here. in there, okay? Yeah. Now, so now we can put this back in there and that's gonna keep the, the dummy cow from to exactly where it needs to be, right? Cool. Now all we have to do is have four more blocks and we'll block up the, ins out, uh, the inside of this and it'll be in there. And that's all there is and to it. And what it means by that, we're gonna glue four more. Four more on the On this, this side, side of them, like that. Look. Yeah, so. yeah, so, so that keeps the cow in exactly Down. where it needs to be. I know, but I'm, I'm just fitting it so you can see it. It, it, it. You never know where they're gonna fit. But if you can see that that block is against the, in yep. there somewhere, okay? So mm -hmm. let's do that and uh, then we'll fit this and see how well it works. All right guys, so the cowling is all installed now. We have it where it's not hitting on anything. What we have to do now is take our four machine screw threaded uh, screws, there's four of these in the kit, put one of the washers on it, and then I'm gonna try and hold this to where Papa can maybe see it. There's no way we're gonna be able to show y'all putting all four of these in, guys. But on the inside, 
there's a hole both tops and down at the bottom that these little screws are going to go in. Um, can you show them that, Papa, right now? They go right, there's one of them. The other one's right here, and the other two are down at the bottom. What I'm going to be doing now is I'm going to take me a Phillips screwdriver, and I'm going to practice my tongue movements on putting stuff in, and I'm going to put these in. But we're not going to show you this, guys, just because it's going to be way too fiddly down in here to put my screwdriver and my hands in there where y'all can see it. But I'm putting all four of these in right now, okay? All right, guys, the next step on our process is we are going to be installing our AR637T. At this point, you're going to pick whatever receiver you're going to use in the airplane. This is the recommended receiver for this airplane. What I'm also going to do a little bit different is I'm going to go on and set up flapperons. Um, this airplane does not have flaps. It has full length ailerons, but we can easily plug our receiver in the right way. I have plenty of channels here. I mean, to do it. So I'm going to take my receiver out. So we're going to put our throttle port and I'm going to, I'm going to figure out where I want to mount this. So when you're doing a receiver, these AR637 T's can mount this way or this way or this way or this way. You can mount them any way you want as long as it's, you know, parallel or perpendicular to the fuselage. So what I think I'm going to do is mount mine right here with my leads going backwards to make it easy for me to put my servos in and then we'll run our wires in a 90 degree angle. So we need to first plug everything in. So I'm going to grab my ESC wire and bring it up from the bottom. This is going to go into port one. Orange wire is, uh, excuse me, the gray wire goes up on the smart ESCs. There we go, port one. The next one is gonna be one of our ailerons. So we're gonna leave it blank right now because the wing's not on. Oh no, I'm gonna use, what I'm gonna do is use these to make it easier to take the wing on and off. So I'm gonna put port two is one of my ailerons. Port three is gonna be my elevator and it is labeled right out of the box for you. Port four is gonna be our rudder. Port five is gonna be your landing gear. We don't have the wing up here right now, so we're gonna leave that unplugged. And then port six is gonna be our other aileron because we're doing flapper on. So I'm gonna go and take and put my other extension in. I'm gonna plug it into port six. And now I have all that in there. Now. I need to put a Y harness on for my uh, gear, and then we're gonna glue this up here. So give me just a second to get everything situated, and then we're gonna glue this on. All right, guys, so we're gonna glue our receiver in now. I did actually find there, the, the kit came with this. It's the retract cable. So it does come with that Y harness. I just had to relook in my bin over here. So I'm gonna take a little bit of sandpaper. I always do this with my receivers, and I hadn't had one fly out yet. So I put a little sandpaper on the back just to kind of give it a rough surface. I sand where I'm going to put it. I grab my tube of bathroom floor caulk. You can see right here I use this window and door silicone caulk. It looks very similar to whatever they use right out of the box. And I'm going to put a nice dab down the middle of that receiver. And then we're going to hold it right where we want it. Squish it down. You guys can see that now, right? I squished it in there. We're gonna just keep an eye on it for a few minutes um, and make sure that it sets up straight. The big thing right now is you need to keep it straight in there. It's probably off. I'm looking at it in a weird way right now. Um, like that, but we're gonna get this all set up and then we'll meet back with you in just a second. All right guys, so it's the next day now. We let all our glue harden up and, and set up. We've had our epoxy on our wings. We glued our receiver in. Now we're at the point that we need to put our wing on, plug everything up. We still have not put our control horns on. That's gonna be one of our last steps after we assemble the airplane that, so we can make sure everything's centered. So at this point, we're gonna put our wing on. 
Um, if you'll grab your wing, it should be nice and dry now. You can see we didn't make a mess. It's all clean looking. The two front ones, these right here, are gonna be your landing gear. The back two are gonna be your ailerons. There is a label on one that says aileron B already, so you can label them if you're gonna be doing, uh, what you call it, um, like what we're doing for flaps, flapper rons. So I'm gonna hold this up here as best as I can. Not always the easiest thing to do by yourself and plug in servo leads. I think Pop is coming around the corner right now to give me a hand. He's gonna hold that wing, kick the camera. It's okay. But what I'm doing is just plugging these four in. Make sure you get all your colors the same directions or it don't work. All right, Papa, I got it. So now, here's the big thing. When you put your wing on, make sure you take all your leads and feed them down out of the way where they're not gonna get pinched between the wing and the sidewall of this airplane. If anything gets pinched, it's a no good. That's when you tear stuff up and that's not good. So we've got the wing on now. We'll give it a quick look, make sure we don't got any wires touching nowhere, and we don't. We're gonna put our wing bolts in. Now, I'm gonna have Lori cut this for a second because I don't wanna have y'all seeing. We screwed these nine mile long bolts in. But you can see they just screw in. Now, we're gonna tighten them up enough to pull the wing flat, but then we're gonna stop. Don't over tighten. And you can look down the side of your airplane to see when it's seated. What I'm doing guys is looking in here and you see that gap and it pulled it down to where it was flush. That's plenty. So there is that. Now we need to put our belly pan on. All right guys, so we have our wings successfully installed. Now we need to put our uh, center part on. I forgot what they actually call this thing. It's a fairing though to make this gap here closed out. Belly pan, there we go. So what me and Papa did is I lined it all up correctly. You need to make sure your landing gear up here are not gonna get bound up in it. Once you're happy with how it's setting, take like this as a little awl, it's just a little pointed piece and what we did is we just poked through the screw holes all around and made a little hole. Now we'll take this off and let me see if Papa can show you that where I put the little holes. There's one here. He can focus in on it. One here. So there's those little holes and what I'm going to do now is take a little drill bit I got one of the smallest drill bits in my kit and I'm just gonna take, line it up with my little hole, go in just a little bit. It don't need to be a lot. We're just trying to pilot drill these little holes. So that the wood doesn't break out when we put our screws in. Oh, there it is. I'm in a very awkward angle trying to show you guys this, but. I know y'all wanna see it. Oops. Camera and a little CA in those holes. Right. Fan CA. Correct. And you wanna try and match the angle that the screw's gonna be setting at. Strengthens that hole so it will not pull out. You do not want to screw the screw in though. You want to let the CA in the hole dry and then put the screw in. So we can take and put a little quick drop in each of them. If I can get the cap off, there it goes. 
Isn't it funny how you can pull and tug on one of these and then all of a sudden it just comes off as easy as it can be? Now the trick with this thin stuff is to be very careful because when it does come out, it comes flying out. And we don't want to run it everywhere. We just want a little drop on the hole. So you want to, yeah, I would have much rather this been flat right now, but I'm trying to show you guys. And the trick is to do this without spraying it all down the wing. It's where you guys can still see what we're doing. It doesn't take that long for nope. the CA to set off. And it, something else, if y'all have this CA, tap it on the table when you're done. Make sure that the hole's cleared out so next time you go to use it, it's not full. If you let it just seal up, then it messes it all up. So if you kind of tap it on the table, you'll get the remnants out. That's probably dry by now. I just put a drop on each of them. So thin CA and better news goes off really quick. So our next step is to grab our belly, belly pan. We're going to put it up on here. Line it up as best we can to our holes. And let me get one started and we'll be good to go. Let's come back just up here. Right, and they're all the same size screws right now, guys. There's a whole bunch of them included in this kit. And you just take and put your little belly pan on with these provided screws. I'm not going to completely snug them yet until we get them all in. I can't tell. Is that it? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Okay. I'll get through that. That's all right. Then we'll snug them down the rest of the way here. You don't want to make these super tight. Remember, you're only going in the balsa, guys. You don't want to over tighten the stuff. If you do, you'll break it. We don't want to break out the wood. I'm just going to suck it down until it touches. I'm going to try to do this where you guys can see it. Sometimes it's challenging part. Now we're not going to glue our belly pan on because we have a little idea coming up to add a bomb drop to this airplane. And I know a lot of guys have been wanting to see us do some panel line and riveting and weathering and this is the perfect candidate for it. So I think we're going to do that with this airplane guys. So I'm going to leave this belly pan just screwed on. That way we can get it off later to do our little customization if need be. So now I'm just going to tighten them up till they touch all the way around. Don't over tighten this. That's, it never hurts. Throw a screw. Check this whole airplane over before. Not a bad idea, guys. Yep, and all mine were tight. But he's right, it's never a bad idea. So, what we need to do now is flip over the airplane. We're going to power it up and bind it, and we're going to check everything is working before we hook up our control surfaces. All right, guys, we're at the point now where we need to set up our airplane so we can put it in our radio. Uh, if you want to see a NX radio setup, you can go over to our Ultra Stick video. But for now, I'm going to show you an IX radio setup today. Uh, we're just going to do this as a blank acro. So we're going to go proceed. Uh, we're going to go over here to the three dots. And this is for any airplane you're adding in the future, but I'm going to show you how to do uh, aler elevons today. What is it called? No, flapperons. Everybody always wants me to ask, show them how to, I do this. So I'm going to do it today. So add a new model. We're going to go default, airplane. Do you want to create a new acro model? Yes, I do. Create. We're going to scroll down to our new acro model. Unless it's right at the top. It's probably not. It's probably at the very bottom. Acro. There it is. We're going to rename it real quick. P47. Oops, I'd like a capital. P dash 47 and then we'll put a space and we'll put 
H9 so we can remember which P47 is because we have about 19 of these. Plus we can take a picture here in a second. So we're gonna go like that. If we wanna take a picture of the model, I'm gonna click this button. Take picture from radio if you have an IX20. I'm gonna pick it up real quick and snap this picture. Ta-da! Oh, I wish it had the top on it, oh well. We can retake it in a minute. This is just for demo purposes right now. So I took the picture, Papa in the plane. You can do this again later when I've got it out at the field and it's prettier, but there we go. Now I have my name, I got my picture, everything set up. We're gonna go back, back, and we should be on that model now, and we are. So from here, the only thing we really need to check right now, because this is a blank acro, before we bind it, don't forget we have an aileron in one port. Dad's phone's ringing. We have an aileron in the flat port and we have the aileron in the aileron port. So what we need to do is go in and change our wing type. So we're gonna go, wrong one, model setup. We're gonna go to aircraft type. We're gonna change our wing type from normal to flap around, as you can see right here. We're gonna leave our tail as normal, everything else is gonna stay normal. We're gonna to change to flap around. At this point, we need to bind to the airplane. So, what we're gonna do, zoom me out. Let's see here. So, at this point, what we're gonna do, we're gonna push the bind button on the transmitter to get to the bind menu. We're gonna just set there for right now. Propeller off of the airplane. I'm gonna grab the cord, plug it in, reach into the airplane, push the bind button. The receiver will start flashing orange. I'm gonna hit bind on the transmitter now. It may be too close, but we're gonna see if it isn't. All right, so the bind is complete. I can test it real quick. Left, right, left, right. It may be backwards. We may have to adjust that in a minute. Up and down is working and the rudder is also working. So all my control surfaces are working now. Now, the reason we waited until right now to put any of our control horns on is because I wanted everything to be centered. Now that we have fired up the model, we've let everything get energized, if we leave it plugged in right now and we flip the airplane over, we can actually start putting all our control horns on and they're gonna be centered right now without having to test them any other way. So let me pop the canopy on so the battery doesn't fall out. And me and Papa are gonna flip this airplane over and we'll meet you back at the tail. All right guys, so we have the model flipped over. It is still powered on. We have successfully bound our transmitter. At this point, what we need to do is put our control horns on. So we waited until this part because right now I know that the controls are perfectly neutral. Now, according to the manual, they want us to use this outer hole out here. So what we're gonna do at first is just kind of clip it in there and take a look at it. Now, if you have a straight edge, so if you have the straight edge, you can hold it on here now, and we wanna make this perfectly flat, as you can see. It's got some down in it right now, so what we need to do is screw our clevis out in order to make this flat. So we're gonna take it off, grab a hold of it, and turn it out. Let's see where we are now. Almost, a little more. getting real close we're about I think we're about two turns away so we're gonna go one two three four that's pretty much right on the chilies now you can see that it's nice and flat all the way across so now we can push this together 
and we're going to take the little rubber piece and move it over. Now, let me move the airplane over so Dad can see me do the rudder for you. But it's the same process, guys. I know he'll have to adjust for a second. Now, more than likely, it's off. They almost always are off a little bit. And it is. So now the rudder needs to come over this way. So I need to tighten it. Just the opposite of the other side. This one's not off as much, but it is still off. Now the trick is to do this without breaking these little plastic things. Getting it broke the first time. Because man, they are tight. Mmm. Mmm. Yep. I'm sorry. Give me just a second, guys. All I'm doing is holding that while I turn it. But man, is it stuck. It's like they glued it. Mm. Okay, I got it. Once you get them loose, man, they turn great. All right, let's see where we are now. I turned it about four turns there. Ooh, there we go. About half a turn more. We're almost there. Ooh, ooh. We do have a baby at home. Oh, right on the chilies. There we go. So now we just take and slide our little rubber thing up. And I did go on ahead and move these at the beginning just to make sure they weren't broke. Now is a good time yep. to check your hinges. So we can take and just pull on them just a little bit. Never ever think that these things are correct out from the factory. Pull on them. will keep you from having a big oh, oh. Now last thing we can do is grab our transmitter. It's still on and just give them a quick control check. Yep. And that's perfect also. I can tell also when I'm looking down at it right now, my tailwheel's a little bit off. Now there's really not an adjustment that I can see. This collar just keeps it setting here. So what I'm gonna do is probably grab this with a pair of pliers and just take it and tweak it just a little bit over to the side. But when you're looking at it dead on, I can tell the wheel itself is off just a little bit. But yeah, everything's working correctly now. We got that, we got ailerons, we got elevator. Beautiful. All right guys, give us just a minute. We're about done. All right, guys, so we've got all our control linkages on. The airplane is all level. I have unplugged it at this point. We're gonna walk the whole airplane over because I've already glued the receiver in. Uh, if you don't glue the receiver in and you do this next part before gluing it in, it's a little easier, but I can still carry the whole airplane over to do this. But if you go check in this corner right here, Lori's gonna link you a video right now. This is to us installing the uh, bind and fly templates to the AR637 or the uh, eight channel version, any of these uh, new spectrum forward programmable receivers, if you have the programming cable, follow that video. And uh, it shows you how to install the profile. Hangar 9 has a receiver profile for this airplane. We're gonna be using it today. And the next step I'm gonna show you is after we have installed that, how to actually finish setting up the transmitter. If you're not running a gyro, the transmitter will be the same, the settings. The only difference is I'm going to be doing the forward programming settings for assigning the switch and making sure my gyro orientations are correct. But as far as the actual transmitter setup, it will be the same whether you're using a gyro or not. So next we're going to get down on the bench, get you focused in on this uh, iX20 and we're going to do the transmitter settings for this airplane. 
All right, guys, so P47 is all set up. We have taken it over to the bench uh, and installed our receiver profile to our AR637T. Uh, remember, we did plug it in where we have flapperons right now, so we're using channel two and six for our ailerons. We have also already set up in the transmitter itself the flapperon option for our wing type. So at this point, we are ready to plug in our model. You will see the control surface is moved two times to tell you that our AS3X is active. At this point, we can do a quick control check. Left, right, up, down, left, right. So we have some of our controls backwards. We need to go on and correct that now before we do anything with our forward programming. So our aileron channels are backwards right now. As you can see, as I go to the left or to the right, it's the airplane is correcting the wrong way. If I go the other way, you can see that the airplane would be correcting the wrong way again. So what we need to do now is go into our model adjustment servo setup. As you can see, because we're running in two channels, as I move the channels, you can see you have a left aileron and a right aileron channel. What we need to do, since they're both going the wrong way, is flip them both. Now, if for some reason, when you have, and I'll show you, if when you have your thing set up, if both of your ailerons go up and down like this, that means you just need to reverse one of the channels. But in the case of this P47, we need both channels reversed. And now you can see that the channels are correct. Our rudder is also the wrong direction. As you see, as I correct left, this is making a right correction. So we need to reverse our rudder channel also. So if we flip that, our rudder channel is now the correct direction. Elevator was correct out of the box, so we don't need to do anything with the elevator channel. All right, so that gets our reverses set up. Now we need to go on and put a throttle cut on this airplane. So we're gonna click on the throttle cut menu. We're gonna click where it says inhibit if you're running an IX radio. If you're using the uh, NX or DX series, it is the same, it's just it's not touch screen. We're gonna reach over and flip our desire switch. I always put mine over here on the top corner. As you can see, the menu's changed. That's all we needed to do. We hit the back button now. We can test it. As you can see, the throttle cut is working. So now we can go on and set up our flapperons. Now, there are no instructions in the manual for doing flapperons. I'm just setting it up because I had the open port and why not? So if we go into flap system now, we can go in and change our inhibit to any switch we like. I'm gonna put my flaps right here. All I have to do is flip them. Now, being that they're flapperons, zero is gonna be your up position. If we move it to position two, we can grab it and you'll see it on the airplane in real time do this. As I move it over, I'm gonna put about half for flaps. So I'll put 30% and I went the wrong way by the look of it because they went the wrong way. So it looks like flaps are gonna be negative on this airplane. So we'll go negative. I'm gonna go negative 30. There it is, ha <laughs> ha. Yeah, that's hardly any. Let's put just a little hair more of that in there. Or, there we go. All right, I'm gonna put 50 in there. And this is kind of an eyeball thing. Like I said, it doesn't come with flaps and we're adding them. So then we can put it in position two, move on down here to our position two, click on it. And we're gonna put this one almost all the way. I'm gonna put this at like 90. And as you can see on the airplane, as we flip through our two positions now, you have flaps, mid and full. And I don't like them to be so fast, so if we just scroll down here to speed, we can change that to two seconds. And now you'll see as I flip the switch, they come down nice and softly. And this is all up to you. If you wanted some down elevator, you can do that also. 
um, but I do not currently have any down elevator. If I wanted it, say after I fly the airplane, I could come over here to this box and I could change, oops, I believe it's this one. Yep, as you see, as I move this box over, it puts down elevator in it. But I'm gonna put that back at zero for now until we fly the model and test it. We may want some down elevator, but for now we don't want any. So we'll just do a quick check, flip through it, down, mid, full up. Ailerons are still working, so we're good on our flap systems. So we can hit back now. The next thing we need to do is make sure that we have our channel seven, although this is a six channel receiver, channel seven is a hidden channel in here just for our safe assignment switch. So we can go back, and I will need to unplug the model for this part because it's gonna tell me to make sure the model is unplugged. So we're gonna unplug for a second. Now we're going to go to model setup. We're going to go to channel assign, proceed. This is gonna turn the transmitters, uh, transmitting port off. Aux two, we wanna assign that to where we want our switch. It's already on the correct switch. I put mine on the B switch, but if you needed to change it, you just click on it and then flip your desired switch. But I do want channel seven, aux two on B switch. So that is correct. At this point, we are ready to start our gyro settings. So, I'm gonna plug the airplane in. It's gonna initialize. We're just gonna leave it alone for right now. And now we can go to model adjust, forward programming. All right, we now have the model all set up where we need to go in and do our gyro settings and forward programming. First thing we're gonna do is hit model adjust. Click on forward programming. Now you get all your settings. We're gonna go to other settings. Oh, excuse me. We're gonna go to gyro settings. System setup. Relearn servo settings. Oops, clicked on the wrong one. Relearn servo settings, apply, complete. Then we're also gonna go to gyro settings, system setup, orientation. Make sure the model is level and press continue, continue. Now, the next part's a little more difficult. You have to hold the airplane on the nose, like so. And at this point, hit continue. Now we can set the airplane back in the stand. You can see that it has picked out the gyro orientation. Antennas are heading towards the front of the airplane with the Spectrum logo and it's up on its side. That's correct, continue. Save settings, the receiver will reboot. You can hear it rebooting. All right, rebooted, hit model adjust to come back. We're gonna go back into forward programming, gyro settings, flight mode setup, and we're gonna make sure our flight mode is on channel seven B switch. So you can see channel aux two, switch B, that's correct. If it's anything else, you need to make sure you put your switch on the correct one. It's as simple as clicking on the switch you want flipping that channel, and there you go. Now we can hit back. As we flip the channel now, you can see self-leveling in position one, inhibited in, switch, in position two, but AS3X is active, and our final position, AS3X inhibited, inhibited, inhibited all the way down. So that's gyro completely off, AS3X only, and self-leveling mode. At this point, the gyro is set up. We can hit back, back, and back, and back, and we can now test it. So in position zero all the way down, I should be able to move the airplane and see the gyro correcting, and I do. The ailerons are now correcting as they should. If I pick the tail up, 
I should see the tail go down as it should. Uh, one other thing that you might need to do is hit a little bit of throttle, throttle cut off, to start the AS3X settings. And it is moving. Everything's moving as it should. We can flip it into AS3X mode, one position up. And we see that it's working and it's correcting. All right, guys, that gets that all done. All we need to do now is finish getting the airplane buttoned up, put the prop on and make sure it's all set and ready to go. All right, guys, so there it is, the P-47. We've got it all set up and bound now. We can test our retracks. They are working. Our AS3X is working. I have verified it. I have ailerons. I have elevator rudder. We know everything's working now. We can check our throttle. Throttle cut works. Throttle cut off. So at this point, we can turn our throttle cut on. We now need to pick out if we're going to use the factory included 4S propeller or if we're going to go on and put the APC 12.8 propeller on it. For now, on our first flight, I want to show you guys the 4S performance. So we're going to just put the factory prop on and the nut. Once you get it all the way down, you just need to find you some kind of a long screwdriver that'll fit in the end of that. Like so. Grab a hold and turn until tight. You don't have to go crazy. Just turn it until it's tight. At this point, guys, we have the airplane all set up and ready to fly. It's going to be great. I can't wait to show it to you. Uh, we're planning on trying to get this out and fly it this week, but you can see how large the airplane is. And it looks great. Uh, Hangar 9 is really making these airplanes easy now. I mean, it's, it's a great time to be in the hobby when your ARFs come out of the kit or come out of the box with all the electronics in it ready to go. All you got to do is bolt it together real easy. So anyway, guys, if you've enjoyed this video, please make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Get out there and fly with your friends, and we will see y'all in the next episode of the Merry Boozers. Bye.